Elon Bravo, thank you very much for joining us. If I can start by asking you, how does the Aspire in the World Fellows Program serve as a joint learning hub for Aspire Academy and its members worldwide? And what are the key benefits of this collaborative platform? So, so maybe let's go back a little bit about how the whole thing started. Uh, and this is now a decade old program concept that has had eight years of running, but it's two years of planning before that. So we always thrive and think we ought to just kind of be curious, ask questions, continue to, to tell ourselves, is there something else? Is there something new? Uh, and we have, we have one advantage, which is we have an academy that gathers minds and, and people from different backgrounds, uh, trajectories, football schools, um, uh, ideas. So when, when we started thinking, can we create the community we have in Aspire on a global scale? Can we, uh, scale? Can we do this with clubs from Europe, from South America, from Asia, from North America? Uh, and can we create the right environment where all these people, when they gather, they really want to try to question themselves. When they do that and we question ourselves, all of us are actually trying to see if we can do things better. So I don't think there's any other program like the Aspire in the World Fellows where the practitioners in football gather and feel they can open up, they can put down the wall and not just put the tracksuit, the logo of Man United, Real Madrid or United States soccer and just ask the questions and don't be afraid of being pushed into things that people are not comfortable with. Um, so in that sense, I think the benefit is it makes us better. And what we do here in Qatar for the football community, for our players, for the national teams, uh, gets richer, gets smarter, gets a little bit more humble because we also take things from others that we think, wow, we didn't think about that. So in that sense, I think it's, it's a program that I'm extremely proud of the work that we've done, the, ex, the, the work that Walter Di Salvo, his team, the whole academy have done, uh, and just the traction it's gotten over the years and the kind of people we gather. You use the word humbled there. So were you surprised at the reaction and the support you got for that idea? Yes, and, and you know, when, when you look at it now, 10 years later, so again, two years planning, eight years running it, you, you go back to the beginning and mm, it's, not, it's not easy to predict whether people are going to jump on the idea, whether they're going to actually continue with you along the journey. That's something also we should be very proud about. All of our fellows, the, 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 the group of 50 plus federations and clubs that make the community have stuck through it for the decade. And, and continue to thrive in it. Uh, so at the beginning, we are leading this effort. You don't know how some of these big clubs and federations are going to feel about, well, Aspire Academy from Qatar is leading this community. How is that going to work? Uh, but it's happened and, and we look back now and I think we all learn from each other. But I think it's great that we lead this effort with some of the best institutions in, in football in the world um, and after 10 years when you look back you said everybody's getting value out of it and everybody wants more so that that's something you don't see very often in football we start things uh, they fade out in a couple of years everybody moves on to different projects uh, continuity I always believe continuity is what gives you really uh, a legacy and we're trying to build a legacy in what ways has the Aspire in the World Fellows program contributed to the growth and development of Aspire Academy here in Qatar, both in terms of knowledge exchange and fostering international partnerships? Massively. I think, you know, first of all, obviously everything we do, every program, we always ask first, how can we benefit from it in terms of what we're doing in developing players, in getting success with our teams and with the national teams, in getting the Qatar Stars League to have better players that have been groomed locally in Qatar by Aspire. And every time you go to a new context, a new environment, a new league, a new country, you had to adapt to what you have. So for us, it was always about, okay, we come from different backgrounds, whether we've been in Madrid or whether we've been in Italy or whether we've been in England, working with some big clubs or federations, we need to adapt to what we knew 
to what Qatar needs and what the players of Qatar need and are best at. So when we created the hub, we wanted to also understand how others are doing somewhere else, but we, we have to adapt to our model uh, same way that the other clubs from the different countries or the different federations need to take things that they see at the fellows program at the summit and adapt it to the realities and contexts. So it has been massive for us in terms of really understanding what's out there in pushing the boundaries of what ifs, but okay, that's how it's done here, 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 and for us, but what if we all thought about this? And sometimes they will tell you, ah, that wouldn't work for us. And we, we say, well, it would work for us. Okay, well, maybe we can take a little bit from yours, adapt it to ours, and then it will work. So that's sort of the, the fluid, the fluid growth that we've had over the years. And for us, the most important part is, so now we're gonna do a big summit, a big gathering, everybody loves it, everybody just spends time together. It's the sessions, is the start chats, is the big names, is, is the round tables, which I value the most, and is the socializing, is to actually, once you're not with your tracksuit talking about how things are done uh, at Bayern Munich, uh, then you actually, the person comes, uh, and, and it's about your frustrations, and it's about, Look, in our club is difficult because the history, the legacy, the, the, the little vices are these, that, that's okay. You get to know the person. That's wonderful. But what I treasure is what happens the other 11 and a half months of the year, which is all these guys continue to work together, continue to, to, to follow up on the things that have been discussed, continue to upload presentations, continue to, to research on the topics. And then the following time we meet, we discuss about how did it apply to your trainings? How did it affect the development process? Did we learn something? Did it make us better? The things that did, can we just continue to push on? The things that didn't work, okay, well, maybe we're not on the right path. Can we tweak? So all that dynamic exchange is what I, I treasure the most. Could you highlight some specific examples of how the Aspire of the World Fellows Program has positively impacted Aspire Academy? So just a few examples. Uh, to for his stakeholders, such as the students, coaches, staff, uh, in terms of enhancing their skills, their expertise, and global perspectives. I can, I can tell you about specific things that we talk about or the, the, our coaches talk about in the summit, uh, the things that they actually follow up on uh, and try to actually come up with actionable plans, training programs, adjustments to the way we work, whether that's in talent, ID, uh, is, it, is it a conversation about, is it nature, is it nurturing? Um, so that's discussed. Everybody goes back to, okay, we, we were scouting players this way. Should we be actually looking at these other things? So we implement all those things. Is it about growth and maturation? We look at the profile of the players in Germany. What is Bayern Munich dealing with? It has nothing to do with what we have to deal with here. But so our training methodologies need to be adapted to our needs. So we have a discussion about what is growth and maturation? How does it affect the way you plan your training strategies? Are you leaving talent behind because there are late matures, which is what we have in Qatar, as opposed to some other parts in Europe where the early matures are the ones who dominate the scene. Uh, so we, we have the shadow programs. We adapt our training methodologies because of those conversations. When we talk about bringing data into into the training all of us are doing a lot of data analytics everywhere including us and and we we, we like to think we're we're very clever and ambitious about how we do it but how do we bring it to training so that's the that's the question and the debate what do we do with the data is it just sitting in 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 our models or is it something that then with the coaches we work on the micro cycles the meso cycles the macro cycles to include data into the, the training methodologies. We've, we've talked about how do we prepare competitions? We're in, in youth development, but we had to compete for Asian championships. We had to compete to try to qualify to Olympics. We had to compete to try to go to a under 17, under 20 World Cup. So all those discussions are also okay. How does that need to be implemented into the training? and the preparation and the mental enhancement of the player. So we put those into specific areas of our training strategies and preparation strategies. We talk about recovery. We talk about uh, how do we bring also research into training. We talk about resting period. We talk about recovery period. So all those things that are discussed 
uh, there's over 200 thought presentations from all the clubs. When we gather that intelligence, we try to bring it into what our program is. And that is the specific impact that I think our players, our coaches should be first very proud because they are the ones leading it. And second, very fortunate because they're privileged that I don't think other environments, other programs, other institutions can have such a wealth and breadth of knowledge to implement into the training programs. How does the Global Summit event promote innovation and best practices in sports education and training? And how has this influenced the programs and initiatives implemented here at Aspire Academy? I think it goes back to maybe the, the, the first thing we talked about, which is we're always curious and always asking the questions. So every time we understand from our gatherings, from the summit, from the discussions, there's a new trend, there's a new thought, there's a new innovation, uh, there's new technology, there's new, there's new analysis through data analytics. We want to be one of the first ones to just kind of knock on that door and say, okay, what is it? Um, again, not only to, to bring it into the training, to lead the conversation with the different peers, with the groups, uh, with a fellows community. And we want to also expose that that we see to the different football stakeholders in Qatar. So for example, we, we, we bring it to the clubs, we bring it to QFA. Uh, we make sure that the media community is also exposed to that. So they understand, so they see we are in a way ambassadors of Qatar football when we are out there taking this, this role, this lead into this conversation. So we also communicate to the rest of the football community, whether that's European clubs, South American clubs, Asian top federations, that we are at the forefront and we are always trying to be, as I said, humbled, but also ambitious about what we do. And, and all that I think has created a sense out there that there is a football culture in Qatar. Um, there is a strategy, there is an idea, uh, there are incredible people who are trying to be dynamic and gather uh, the football community, international football community, into that conversation. And I should say, I think it's relevant to mention that what you talk about here is evident in what we see right here, out on this pitch. We are watching a group of young athletes having the time of their lives here. And I think that is probably one of the examples of how it affects it. It is, and the energy. We, 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 we all thrive in the energy. So to have the energy to, for, for, for them to be here, surrounded by the coaches, uh, by management, by, by, by all of us, I think it's also part of feeling part of, of a community and, and having a purpose of what we're trying to do together. Now, as the Director General of Aspire Academy, what role do you see the Global Summit event playing in shaping the future of sports education and its potential to create a lasting positive impact on individuals and communities around the world. I think, you know, always when, when we do the, the summit and we gather all these professionals, which are incredibly committed, passionate, where I always say we're so fortunate to work in football, to work in development, where we're actually trying to create a path for young uh, aspiring individuals who have big dreams to maybe one day play professionally, but even if they don't, the years of experience they're going to have into this formative environment where they're actually nurtured, where they are being pushed to see what their own limits are, we're so fortunate. So when we gather with, with the coaches, with the practitioners from all these clubs and federations, I always tell them, treasure it. Treasure it because this is a community, again, that interacts all year round. And we are, in a sense, ambassadors of the game. We go back to our countries, to our clubs, to our federations. And what we do with these young players, with these young individuals, will shape the future of their, of their own football cultures, of their own national teams, of their own clubs uh, that have centennial traditions, that have history, that have legacy, that have DNA. And the fact that they are part of this group that kind of acts as a think tank that continues to see how to get better, how to always go into the next uh, phase, next thing, into 
the improvements and the evolutions that can be done, it's it's a privilege. And I think again, when they when they've been there for a decade or eight years uh, in the running, they have an experience and a history that maybe can be matched by by too many people in this in this industry in this sector. So I I want to believe that we are uh, even if little steps uh, one at a time, short steps. We are having a positive influence in the way football is developing around the world. And I'd like to finish in asking you if you had a mission statement for this program, something that summarizes it in a short sentence. Let me do a little caveat first, which is, you know, the reason why we at some point capped it at 50 is because we wanted to recognize and reward the group that started with us. So we get every year we get 30 plus requests to join the community and we've, we've opened up our knowledge database to, to, to the wider community, but we have not invited other clubs or federations to be part of the fellows program, the, the sort of the, the launching community, because we do recognize and reward those who wanted to be part of it from the beginning. Uh, so uh, I, I think that that sense of we are leading with you in this front will continue, but obviously we open it up for everybody. So if I had to summarize it in a very basic way uh, and in a simple way, uh, and I know it probably doesn't really grab everything comprehensively, but I would say to all the community, to all of those who get close to the summit and to the fellows program is never stop learning never stop sharing because I think that's what that group is about and that's what football needs.